This is video four. We are still on page 392 and we're going to be looking at check it out problems. So I am going to turn my phone, tilt it just a little bit so that you can fit everything in the picture. And we are looking at the diagram with the basketball goal. And the question says, in parallelogram KLMN, and we have that over here, KLMN, LM equals 28 degrees, and you can probably tell that I have lightly labeled that. LN equals 26 degrees, that is from here to the opposite corner, and LKN, LKN equals 74 degrees. Find each measure. So the first thing they want us to find is KN. Let's look at KN. KN according to the properties of parallelograms, must be congruent to its opposite side, which is ML. So if ML is 28, then KN is also 28. Let's look at the measure of angle NML. NML, and for convenience, we're gonna just call that angle M. Well, remember that it has to be congruent to its opposite angle. The opposite angle is LKN, and it's 74 degrees, so if this angle is 74 degrees, then its opposite angle also must be 74 degrees according to the properties of parallelograms that we just learned. And lastly, we wanna find LO. Well, LO is half of this diagonal. We know that it's cut in half by the other diagonal according to the properties of parallelograms. And the problem tells us that LN is 26. Well, we only need LO, so we're gonna take half of 26, which is 13. Okay, let's move on to page 393 and look at example two at the top. We're just simply applying the things that we have been learning so far today. And I'm tilting my phone again so that we can fit everything into the picture. All right, we're using the properties that we've learned to now find the measures of angles and sides. So they tell us ABCD is a parallelogram, find each measure. So remember, we know the properties of parallelograms tell us that the opposite sides are gonna be parallel. They are also gonna be congruent and the alternate angles are gonna be congruent and the consecutive angles are gonna be supplementary. So let's get started. They want us to find AD. Well, we know that BC is 5X plus 19 and we know that that has to equal AD. So we simply can write an equation that says 5X plus 19 is equal to 7x, and then we solve. And they have done that for us right here. They solved and found that x is equal to 9.5, and then we're able to take that 9.5 and plug it in to what we need to solve. We need to solve AD. So we're gonna be saying seven times x, or seven times 9.5, and our answer is gonna be 66.5 for the length of AD. Looking now at example B, we're gonna also be looking at angle B, which is 6y plus five. Well, remember our property tells us, our parallelogram property tells us that two consecutive angles must be supplementary. They, that means they add up to 180. So we can say 10y minus one right here, plus 6y plus five equals 180. We solve for y, we find out it's 11, and then we plug it back in to the angle that we need to know, which is B. So we would say six times 11 is 66, plus five is 71, and that's our final answer. All right, we do the same thing right here in the check it out. This is just another complete version of what we were doing, just using different parts of the parallelogram, but solving and plugging in. So here we have EFGH as a parallelogram, and as you can tell by looking at it, we're gonna be using the property that says that the two diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So they want us to find JG. Here's JG, JG, and we know that it's half of EG. We also know that it's equal to EJ, because here's half, and here's half. So we can simply write an equation setting 3w equal to w plus 8. And I've done that off to the side. 3w equals w plus 8. We solve for w, it equals 4. And then we plug that back in to jg, which is what they wanted us to solve for. So 4 plus 8 is 12. All right, the next one is fh. We would solve that by doing the same thing. We set fj 
equal to JH. So we would say 4Z minus 9 is equal to 2Z. So, and I have that over here as well. Z equals 4.5. We go and plug it back in and we find out that FJ is 9. JH is also 9, of course, because they're equal. And 9 plus 9 is 18. And that's the length of FH. So again, all we did there was set this side equal to this side because we knew it was bisected by EG or cut in half. So we said 4Z minus 9 equals 2Z. We solved and then we substituted our Z to solve for what the lengths of the, um, for each half of that diagonal. Then we added them up to get the whole thing. Okay, let me look ahead. That is all that we're going to do in lesson 6-2. So you do not need to worry about example 3, which is, let me do it so you can see it. You don't need to worry about that, parallelograms in the coordinate plane. And you do not need to worry about the proof part at the top of page 394 or any of the items on page 394. So you can completely skip that. But let's quickly look ahead and see if there are any problems that we need to apply this to in 6-3. Hmm. All right, I am going to go ahead and stop this one and start again with video five. Please have your book on page 399 when I start back, and we will just look at a few example problems and that will be it.